Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here for Board Game Blog, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about what I played this week, a little about what's coming up, and a brand new idea I might or might not have, which you guys can help me decide on. So, um, we, as a board game group, we made a pact to get um, Venus back on the table this week after playing it once and setting it down for a year. So, it's kind of a it's a good and a bad part about our hobby that we're always kind of chasing the new thing and wanting to talk about the newest things that we've played. Um, it, it happens a lot to me that someone will ask, oh, hey, what you play this week? And I'll say, oh, I played Trajan. And they're like, oh, yeah, I played that once. Because if it doesn't come out within a certain amount of time between when they talk to you and when the game came out, it's seen as kind of less interesting, which is interesting all on its own. But uh, these are... These are people who play more games than I do, which is saying something. Um, but Venus came out and we played it four times. And for anyone that has not seen this before, it's Vital Lacerda's first game. Um, you are making wine in Portugal and either exporting it, selling it, sending it off to the fair for the judges to look at. Um, it is another crazy Lacerda board where you just have a million things going on, but the actual action selection is this uh, group of nine squares, and every time you want to walk um, to your next action, you have to like move your little piece. Uh, if you move it two spaces, you have to pay an extra thousand, and if anyone is in the square already when you want to go there, you have to pay each of them a thousand dollars. And so... This game is lightning fast. It's 12 actions um, with some upkeeps in between. And in those 12 actions, you have to develop your vineyards and get wineries and uh, sell to the, to the people and use your actions and find money somehow. And it's this devastatingly brutal economic game. You are trying to get money in this game, so you sell off your wine, right? But that money gets deposited into your bank account, so then you have to take bank actions to get your money out. But the whole time you have a little investment track, it's similar to Madeira, where at any time you can divest and take dividends, getting cash out. But then if you don't want to lose money over time, you have to reinvest all that money. So when you go to the bank, you can't take all of it as cash, you have to take some of it as investments. Um, we loved the fact that you very rarely feel out of the game um, but once you get toward the end of the game you really start having to claim your end game scoring spots and that can be where the biggest point swing comes in if someone snipes one one turn before you did or whatever it is um, it can be pretty darn devastating to not get the thing you were working toward the whole game. And so the first round is six actions, the second round is four actions, and the third round is only two actions long. And so the pace of the game kicks up and is unbelievably crazy toward the end of it. Um, really glad to have played it. Don't own it because I keep thinking I'll buy the new version when it comes out even though the old one is still sitting at, on the shelf at work. Uh, so. It's tricky whether or not I just go pick that up now. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad to have played it, and it's it's nice before the Gallerist comes out next month uh, to get that on the table. Um, the next one I personally would very much like to get to the table is Florenza, which has been sitting on my shelf for months now, not being played, being sad. Um, we had one game night where four of them played Florenza behind us while we played Deus. And let me tell you, I was super, super jealous because... Deus, Deus is a good game, but Florenza looked amazing. Uh, I think it gets slowed down by, by players that have AP problems, uh, which is not me, so <laughs> I don't have that problem. But I think maybe it's because I don't think as much as I should in games. I kind of play as I play. Um, it also means I don't win very often. But I do have a lot of fun playing games, so that's good. Um, I also have for Thursday a Conflict of Plants, which is a prototype for my friends down in Texas for the board game group. Um, they have likened this to dominant species, so they better be ready to put their money where their mouth is, because that is one of my favorite games. And I would much rather you say that the game is this and this and this than compare it to one of my favorites and have it be a disappointment. Looking at you, diamonds, you're no spades. Um, and then the, the last thing I have planned for this week, uh, my copy of DR Congo comes in tomorrow, and my friend Jennifer came up from Portland for some business, and she brought her copy, and so we have plans to play that on Saturday night. So I am ready to raise up some hope and take over the Congo. Um, that is an interesting game because my playgroup 
even though I thought the game looked fascinating and the, the theme seemed understandable, uh, they were all kind of still on the fence about it. What's nice about my playgroup is that they will still play stuff with me even if they're not fully sold on it. The unfortunate part is um, if they're not into it, it's very hard to get replays. So I've only played Impulse three times because I will play any chuck anytime, anywhere. And unfortunately, that one just did not hit well with my group. And we had one person that found some crazy infinite and went a little nutty with it. And we, I mean, you just have to, you have to go into those games knowing game chuck games are nutty. They, they just are. Um, Ote and I coming out really soon means that I'm gonna have to re convince them to play it. They played my prototype, my PN, my print and play prototype of it. Um, so I, I will have to get that back on the table. Um, so uh, the last part is that probably tonight um, I may periscope a little bit of it. Um, Arena of the Planeswalkers. Brian and I are going to play that finally. I played it at Essen last year and I've played one demo since. Uh, it's a HeroScape and Magic mixed together. Uh, Brian runs a Magic YouTube channel, like a pretty big YouTube channel, and so he needed some footage and stuff for that, so I was like, oh, sure, I'll play it, whatevs. Um, it should be interesting. I, I hope I hope that I get the Planeswalker I want, but we'll see. We're, we're going to have to like pull him out of a hat or something. Uh, and the last thing, and so that's probably all the board game stuff I want to talk about. The next thing is a big idea I had, so feel free to cut out now, but any of you still listening, please let me know if this idea sounds like something that already exists, because if it exists, I'm happy to not have to start a new project, but it's in my head now, and so I really feel like doing it. Um, I want to curate an up-and-coming list of games every month. So the month of August, these are the games I'm excited about, me personally, and these are the games I think are going to be big hits. And so that list can include links to their official pages, their Facebook pages or whatever, their BGG reviews, vlogs, if I do a vlog about them, I can link to that, and just kind of curating a list, but keeping the, the span of it rather short. Because there's something going on in board games where, this is a good and a bad thing again, um, the publishers are like, we have this license to make a game. It'll be out late 2016. And so people are always looking so far out in the future. And I am much more like, what am I going to be able to get on a table next week? What am I going to be excited about next time I talk to you? Um, so I want to make something that's shorter length. And that hopefully can also, as games start getting hard dates, uh, they can be like linked into a Google Calendar or an iCalendar or something. Um, so if any of you guys are interested on, on release dates and how they work, in board games, they are best guesses. Uh, a publisher says, I sent my files to the production in China, and so I can tell you that it's probably coming out in quarter one. And then when the folks in China push the button to start production, they say, okay, that'll take X amount of time. Now I can probably narrow down to the month. And then when the games are on a boat from China to the States, they can narrow it down again. And it narrows down and narrows down until maybe we get two weeks of a solid date, maybe. And any games that have a solid date on them are either already produced and sitting in a warehouse or lies. And so, especially in my professional day-to-day, -day, it's very frustrating for me for someone to say, oh, hey, I'd like to pre-order a copy of Seafall. Like, okay. Well, that was announced two years ago, and it still doesn't have a hard date, so I will write down your name for that, but I can't give you any information. So uh, I, I like to work in absolutes and short terms as far as that goes because it's much more exciting for me to talk about Pandemic Legacy because that has release dates than Seafall which is going to be a really cool game and a really big hit and everything for people but it was underbaked and not not ready for as much talk as it got when it was announced like I, I seriously remember people pre-ordering at work when uh, two years later, it still doesn't have a release date. And this, I know I'm going to get snarky comment number four because I haven't noticed it has a final release date again, but um, that's okay. So I'm going to look into probably WordPress because uh, I'm not 
I am not a coder, I'm not a developer. Um, these are things I maybe should have looked into when I was younger, but I never did. So i uh, just going to make some sort of WordPress site and see what I can come up with. Um, it will give me a little more focus for the vlogs, but I will still keep doing them with what I'm playing. And then I'll still keep up on Blender segments. If you guys saw Board Game Blender on the Dice Tower Network, I, I plan to do that for a while. And if they do this other type of segment they've been talking about, I'd, I'd like to do that too. Um, so we'll see how all this goes. Uh, if you have questions or suggestions or any other feedback for me, as always, you can comment here. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter at MaggieBot. Um, and then if you'd like to and you'd like to have a longer conversation about it, I, my email is maggie at maggiebot.com. It's M-A-G-G-I at M-A-G-G-I-B-O-T dot com. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what people have to say about this because most of my friends have been really supportive, but I haven't had any exchange of ideas with anyone, so I haven't been able to suss out what all could go wrong. And that's it's always nice to know the, the big obstacles before you hit them. Uh, that is all for me, and it was nice to see you all again, and I will see you next time.